let me show you what just arrived at my house. Two giant boxes of board game. This is Joan of Arc. It's a big box, very heavy. But it not only came with this big box, it came with another one as well. This is a box of the same size, the Reliquary box. So there is a lot of board gaming goodness in here. I saw this game when I was at Gen Con. I guess it was two years ago now. It's been before uh, COVID. And I saw the game and I wanted to get it, but they told me that I couldn't buy it then. I needed to back the Kickstarter. So I did. And I've been following the updates uh, ever since I did that. And it just showed up on my porch uh, this afternoon. So what I'm going to do is unbox it because I don't really remember everything that was in it. I remember it had really neat looking miniatures with uh, knights, but also uh, medieval fantasy creatures and things like that in it. So I'm going to take it down to the workshop and I'm going to open it up and you can come with me and we'll see what's inside. Let's start with the main box right here. It's almost too big actually for my desk here with my camera, but we'll still get into it. It's got the nice matte box. I always like that. Player aid right here. That's good. We will look at that much later. Oh, I remember it had hexagons. Hadn't thought about that in a while. Big stack of cardboard. Scenario book. Rule book. A lot to go through there. And scenarios to play. Custom dice. We've got wooden cubes. Large decks of cards. Decks of smaller cards. Oh, wow. I didn't know or didn't remember that it came with these. Check this out. Oh, this is going to be cool. They'll probably be fun and easy to paint, too. Oh. I love terrain the easy way. It's probably going to make some really fantastic setups. Monsters. Oh, and I love these angels. I forgot about these guys, too. I remember seeing these at uh, Gen Con, and I think that's one of the reasons that I wanted to get this game, because I really like angels. I bet that's Michael. And so I am excited about those. Carts. I guess for your supplies. Unicorn. A Stegosaurus-type monster. Or an Ankylosaurus-type monster, rather. All kinds of... I suppose these are stands. I bet they fit... Yep, they fit the miniatures, so that's probably something to do with a player marker. Hello. Two boxes. Oh, neat. Oh, wow, this is going to be a great-looking table. Look at those trees. That is cool. I'm looking forward to seeing all this set up. We've got walls here. Nice. Bushes, I suppose. Rocks. This looks like a little well. Isn't that nice? Huh. Looks like a shrine. Probably a religious shrine of some kind. I like these. I remember these from playing Bretonia long ago. And you can't really have a Hundred Years War game without your stakes, can you? So... I am sure there will be lots of longbowmen hiding behind these stakes. I like this scale. Of course, I don't have a whole lot of things in this scale. Everything is the much larger miniatures, and I like them too. But one of the things that I was attracted to when I saw this game at Gen Con was that it uh, did use uh, a different scale miniature. Technically, it's larger scale, but smaller miniatures than something like the Game of Thrones or a Song of Ice and Fire game. Oh, there are the, all the miniatures. Looks like decals. Oh, I like that. That's going to be neat. And then here are all the knights and the soldiers that I like so much. Yeah, see, I don't have anything of this scale. And I really like the historic look of many of these. Of course, then there is the fantasy element as well. But I think they're a really nice look. Let's see. Let me see if I can just pass this under under the camera. We've got 
these look like knightly hero characters, I suppose. They're very individual across here at the top. Oh, the bishop, I like him. And then some peasants. Peasant girl. Maybe these here. Oh, wait, this is cool. He's some type of... Maybe demon's got horns. Look at that. That's cool. And then uh, your halberdiers. And then a whole bunch of mounted knights. And I like this werewolf, too. And then these look like mounted archers. I'm a fan. Now, in here... Lots of good-looking foot knights. I've got a huge backlog of miniatures to paint. But this one might be just a lot of fun to do. Might be able to do them with some washes and not take too much time. We'll see. Looks like a game to do batch painting with, because the individual figure may not matter so much at this scale, but trying to achieve a really good look across the entire board. Here are the longbowmen. They're probably going to end up behind those stakes. They've got a great look, too. Billmen, it looks like. Also great-looking infantry. Sword-wielding foot knights would be my guess. More good-looking guys. Crossbowmen behind pavises. Also very classic for the period. Looks like peasant infantry with clubs and a knife or a dagger. Maybe the conscripts or the peasant levy. Wolves. There's classic fantasy. Thinking about the wolves from The Hobbit. I like those. They've got a really good look. I like fantasy that's not over the top. Oh, now here's something crazy. Look at these skeletons. So they've got a scythe here, but they've got armor on. Look at that. I wonder if these represent dead units, or if they actually represent you know, the, the walking dead. Maybe that's an undead faction in here. I think those are cool. One more. This looks like another fantasy element. Oh, it's a knight, like, in fire? He's got a sword. Yeah, he's got a sword, but he, looked, he looks wreathed in flames. I don't know what that's about. You can definitely see why I picked this game up, or wanted to pick this game up when I saw it in person at Gen Con. I'm not going to open up all the cards right now, because I don't want them to get everywhere. And it may be a little bit anticlimactic after looking at the miniatures, but I do kind of want to see what is in these punch boards may all be hexagons for the battlefield, but let's see. These are really thick punch boards, by the way. I wonder if those are rocks that can be replaced with the 3D rocks. Oh, cool. That looks beautiful. So yes, lots of the board, but then some other things too. And just when you think it's over, there is a whole other box. So this says the Reliquary Box. Time of Legends. Let's see. Okay, once again, very tall box for this table and this camera setup. But got two here. Oh, two different languages, I'll bet. More cards in this box. I'm not going to open all of them up right now. Looks like more miniatures. Spacer. Let's go in order. I noticed they've got a number on them. So this one says it is uh, the first box. So let's see what this one is. Oh, let me run these over the camera. We've got more knights. I love these guys. They're a size where you can actually have an army, and I like that. Of course, I love the larger miniatures that you play you know, with Dungeons & Dragons with or Warhammer, but you know, sometimes you do just want an army. So I know that's what I was thinking when I got these... Uh, Got this box. 
really cool, I suppose, heroes up here. They're all very individual. These look like... They're not owl bears, but they're some kind of bear. Standard bear. The king, I suppose. Or a king. This guy might be the one who's leading the, that army of skeletons. Look at him. Also a really neat fantasy. Maybe a wizard or something here? And we've got a woman with a banner. One of these someplace is probably Joan of Arc. Artillery. Guy with pack mule. With something limbered up there. And then we've got some really cool knights. These may be some kind of elite knight. And these guys down here have... Uh, I guess that's a really cool uh, feathered or winged shield. This one says there's number two. Oh, well. Well, if you want some large miniatures, all right, we got them in here as well. Bags of other miniatures. Well, that's, I tell you what, we'll check them out first. This guy looks like an uh, Arab uh, bowman, looks like. But this guy's not. This guy is clearly more Western knightly in the classic look. So this may be a mix of stuff. Scimitar armed infantry? When am I going to have time to paint all this up? Foot soldiers. Oh, a guy with a warhammer. I like warhammers. I like him. Most of these guys have swords. Oh, and Beck de Corbin. Look at that. I like what the, they did with all these miniatures. Ooh, here's a skeletal flute player. It's like a ghoul? Bowman? Wow. I could be here all day taking a look at all the different guys I got. This is just our brief overview. Another crossbowman behind a pavis. It looks like some kind of demon monster again. See, something in here winged. Oh, that's a very classic-looking demon. Check that out. Very cool. Also looks like some kind of demonic monstrosity. Sensor bearer. Kind of cult-like. I like the demons. Another really neat horned demon. Infantry. Peasant with the classic pitchfork. Axes. Spears. That is a lot of stuff. Now, to these big guys. Boy, this is something else. Some type of genie here, supporting... That's out of the way. That's going to be next, three. Just when you think it's over, there's still another one to go. Some kind of genie here, supporting a big uh, carpet with a tent on it. That would be a neat display piece. And then we've got... Looks like a cockatrice. It's not often you see those represented. I like that. And then I guess this is our griffin. It looks very muscular. All right, last box, number three. Whoa. Winged Hydra? I guess is what that is. Think of how big that is. I feel like I should get something else out just for the sense of scale. There we go. Here is our Hydra, winged Hydra. It's got legs, too. I'm not exactly sure what that's supposed to be. But anyway, our winged Hydra-like god. And here you are. <laughs> See, even sometimes I think we should be playing more D&D &D with that size scale. You'd be able to, a scale miniature, you'd be able to get a whole lot more on the table. A little bit not as easy to move, but you'd be able to get a lot more on the table and do some more dynamic setups. But yes, fight that off, guy. <laughs> All right, so that is a look at the Joan of Arc game. It was a very pleasant surprise today because I don't remember anything about it other than thinking it was cool when it was set up at Gen Con. So I got it, and so it was a really nice surprise to see today show up. It's going to be a great addition to the board gaming shelf. Oh, look, there is our monster, big monster right there. He's depicted on the box of the, uh, the reliquary box. So anyway, Joan of Arc, great addition to the board gaming shelf. Maybe we'll get to dig into it here later. But first impressions, very positive. I'm glad I got it. Thank you guys.